Hey everyone. So first off, these values are from Stan's VIC that was measured. Uh, came from Stan's estate, measured by Don Gable years ago. Uh, so these are pretty close to uh, the exact values we have that Stan used. And from them we can do calculations and make some really important determinations and uh, understand the VIC a little bit better. So what I want to do first off is just say that the VIC is not an over unity transformer. It's an over unity device from all the research I've done. It actually follows the same design rules as any other transformer and that is you get a primary and secondary circuit. You can't pull more power on the secondary side of the circuit than you do on the primary. There's just no way around that. In any transformer design that's what it's going to be. Um, primary and secondary power draw is nearly equal. Usually secondary is a little bit lower because your primary coil also the current goes to charging uh, or magnetizing the core. So how do we figure out the turns ratio? We've got three coils on the same core. If, and we don't know the turns on any of these. We can estimate them but another way to do it is to look at the resistance values, which I think is a little bit easier. So first off, if we use each coil and say they all act as secondary coils, and we take the resistance of all three coils together, 219.2 ohms, and divide that by the resistance on the primary coil, 10.5 ohms, and then we look at our power draw, power draw on the secondary side of the circuit is almost three times what it is on the primary. So now, man that's odd, these coils are on the same core but these aren't producing or they don't have an induced voltage like the secondary coil. Why is that? What's different about them? The way I look at it, um, the way the coils are oriented, um, you do have an induced voltage but the current flow cancels it out. It's my opinion. It can be proven wrong. But the math also shows that for some reason these are not secondary coils. They only act as chokes, which Stan also says. So, next problem. Okay. We look at these two coils to determine the turns ratio. All we're really doing is looking at the resistances right now. We're not going to consider the uh, reactances or impedances just to make things simple. So we know all the coils use the same size wire. Why can't we just take 72.4 divided by 10.5 ohms? We do that. Turns ratio is 1 to 6.89. Well now we're still pulling I think probably 16 or 17 watts on the secondary circuit. Still doesn't work. Why is that? thought about it for a while then I realized well it's pretty simple the bobbins are the same size so the primary coil has only got six or seven layers each layer has a certain length per turn and each turn will have a specific uh, resistance value so the more layers you build on top of each other the higher the resistance per turn gets and that's what throws off your calculation here you think about the secondary coil, it's got 28 to 30 layers. Well, the primary only has six or seven. I did the math and I found that 30th layer has roughly 20% more resistance per turn than the sixth layer on the primary coil. So you can't just divide them to get the turns ratio, it doesn't work. Okay, well, there's two problems down, didn't work. What can we think of next? In my previous video about methods of current limiting, I discussed the electric double layer uh, that forms in the cell. And when that forms, if the voltages are equal at each electrode, the current, the leakage current through the cell is almost zero. That's also claimed in scientific papers I have. So that resistance when the circuit is at resonance, that resistance is so high that you don't even need to calculate it in the rest of the circuit. So when we take the three secondary coils of 219.2 ohms, divide them by 10.5 of the primary coil, we get this value here, 20.876. 
we know the impedance ratio is the turns ratio squared. So essentially that is the impedance ratio right there. When we take the square root of that, we get 4.56. Now, if we assume that's the turns ratio, then we get a voltage on the secondary circuit of 54.72 volts. Divide that by the resistance of the three coils. You know, the coils essentially at resonance are the only load there is. They're the only thing dissipating power. So, take that, you get 250 milliamps. That gives you a power draw of 13.6 watts. Really close to primary. This doesn't include the magnetizing and current. Uh, the primary coil will have more current flowing through it um, because it also magnetizes the ferrite core. But, hopefully that all made sense. Now we know the chokes do not act as secondary coils and that the turns ratio, this math isn't perfect, but the turns ratio of Stan's transformer or VIC was somewhere between 1 to 4.4 and 1 to 4.6. So let's look at some more math here. This is a spreadsheet I made the other day I just wanted to share. This is a VIC current requirements. I'm using this choke value, 1.26 Henry's, calculating the reactance of that choke at these frequencies here. 1, 5, 8, 10, 12, and 15 kilohertz. And this is my reactance. Using just basic Ohm's law, take my reactance, divide by this voltage, and I get this current here on the secondary side and this current on the primary side using the uh, turns ratio and I calculate those. So this shows you at 1 kilohertz with a VIC, you can't get beyond probably about 2.5 kilovolts before you exceed the current rating of the 29 gauge wire then you burn that coil up and it shows you that the higher you go in frequency the higher the voltage you can get now here at 10 kilohertz we can actually hit 20 kilovolts and Stan actually states that in the tech brief as well that the voltage across the exciter array can exceed 20,000 volts so this isn't exact either, but I think it shows some interesting things. That is, your frequency increases, the voltage, the possibility of getting higher voltages increases. Well, it's essentially just because of your reactance and the current flowing through that reactance. Um, but going back to that, I made a new VIC. Uh, looking at the other one, I really didn't think that I could handle or that it could handle more than two or three kilovolts before I'd start seeing arcing to the case. So these are all new coils. Values are a little bit different, but still pretty close. I also isolated the heat sink, the diode from the case, and I glued these little tabs in here. I did this before I got my 3D printer. If I make any more bobbins, I'll print them up and design them uh, with that tab on them. And, uh, Hopefully, someday, we'll see this thing work. Who knows? It may take 10 more years. <laughs> That's it for now, though. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.